Hello and welcome to Porsche-nomics, the channel that talks about Porsches by the numbers. And today I am going to tell you how, in fact I'm going to convince you how, a £250,000 Porsche 911, like this one, represents great value. That's right, a £250,000 Porsche 911 is great value for money. Keep watching and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> So this is a Porsche 911. So is this, so is this, and indeed so is this. Even this thing here, a Porsche 911. And of course to the uninitiated, they're all the same thing. They all look the same, they're all a Porsche 911. But to those of us that are interested in the Porsche product and are uh, kind of involved in the Porsche 911 world in particular know that there's a huge difference between something like that which is a 964 Carrera 2 Coupe, this which is a G-body Targa, this which is a 964 3.3 Turbo, pretty rare car, uh, or even this which is pretending to be a 911 2.7 RS from the 70s although it is a 72 car but it's a 911E, the GT3 997.2 Club Sport here, they're all different in terms of the way they look, the way they drive, the way they behave, and particularly in terms of their value. So just here, there's a difference in value between that at circa 55 to 60K and the GT3 and the Turbo, the kind of 150,000 pounds-ish, uh, all for what the uninitiated would think are the same thing. Um, however, moving on from, I guess, what we call standard 911s, uh, we now, in recent months and years, come across more and more of these, what we call retro mods, backdates, uh, cars that are effectively reimagined from what they were initially as new cars, particularly when I use the word reimagined, the likes of Singer, who you would have heard of, I'm sure, uh, a brand that reimagines 964 Porsche 911s just like this one and turns them into cars that look like a 1970s car but are beautifully prepared, beautifully refinished, re-engineered in terms of suspension, brakes, interior, and above all, engine, and they turn into phenomenal kind of tickle the boxes, best of all worlds Porsche 911s, but at a price. Now, you can't buy a Singer for less than a million quid. Uh, the 911 Singer Classic was about 500,000 pounds. You can't get an order in for one of those cars anymore. And if you found one on the used market, you'd pay a million quid. If you want one of the 75 DLSs, particularly one in Britain in right-hand drive form, which is a very, very rare car indeed, you're gonna pay a million list if you've got your name on the order bank, uh, the order book, uh, but you probably haven't. So therefore you're gonna have to pay probably two million quid or so for a DLS. There are other derivatives available. Other brands are available. So for instance, Paul Stevens, Tut Hill, Canford Classics, uh, and so on. And Theon, which is uh, a very interesting brand, also built in Britain. Uh, it's almost like the Germans started making these things for the British to come and finish them properly. I'm only kidding, Germans. Uh, but that kind of seems to be where we are now because the majority of these reimagined, these re-engineered, redesigned Porsches uh, are actually being done here in Britain. Um, the, the Theon car, very, very interesting concept. Again, based on a 964, Carrera 2 or Carrera 4, uh, re-finished from a body perspective in carbon fiber, 400 brake horsepower engine, although apparently other derivatives are available, uh, but a very, very well sorted, backdated Porsche that looks, sounds, and goes fantastically, but at a price, 400K, plus a 964 donor. And of course, we all know that 964 Carrera 2s and Carrera 4s in value terms have gone through the roof. Uh, even an edgy one's gonna cost you 60K, a nice one's gonna cost you 90K. So pretty much 500K for a Theon. Uh, the same thing where Richard Tuthill's brilliant 911K product is concerned. The 911K that was recently ragged around a track by Chris Harris for collecting cars at 11,000 RPM, hence the 911. 11k label, uh, but that car is £400,000. Anything from a Paul Stevens, a GS Automotive, a Canford Classics, anything that is stripped, 
rebuilt, repurposed, with maybe 1,000 to 2,000 hours worth of labor plus parts put into that car, they're bound to be very, very expensive indeed. And the majority of them are 400K plus, all the way up to the heady heights of a Singer, a uh, million pounds, even two million pounds. However, there is one brand, one business, uh, a, a workshop, a facility nestled in the Cotswolds that makes something that is much, much less than that for what I believe is pretty much the same thing. And as I said at the top of this video, £250,000 sounds like an awful lot of money for a Porsche 911. But in the context of what you would pay for, let's say, a Theon or a Singer, 250k is brilliant value. And this is one of them. It's a Ren Sport by 911 Ren Sport. Uh, this is a tasty, tasty car. Uh, and one that the guys in the Cotswold and under the uh, supervision of Paul Cockle, the boss, who is another Porsche obsessive, by the way. This started off life as a 1984 911 Carrera and was then stripped to its tub, engine out, and completely repainted with these ST flares, backdated bonnet, backdated bumpers and repainted and rebuilt from the tub up. Uh, it's now a kind of 911 ST, I suppose. Wide bodied, right hand drive, that's my thing. So this has had new interior. The interior is actually produced and fitted by the same guys, apparently, that produced the DLS interior for Singer. This has polybushed up rated suspension with tractive electronic adaptive suspension. Brand new up rated brakes, six pot calipers at the front, four pot at the back, and uh, is effectively a new car, but based on an old car. It's kind of the old with all the new bits added. I guess you could call it the Katie Price of Porsche 911s. Uh, it's got the maturity and the long standing but with some new modern bits added on for good measure and for your pleasure and enjoyment. Uh, so the upshot of this car though, of course, body is nice, it's a lovely looking thing, as hopefully I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, suspension's great, brakes are great, interior's great, it's got air conditioning. Uh, I'm sure you wanna have a look on the, uh, on the inside in a second, but the PS de la resistance of the 911 Rennsport is of course this under the engine hood. Notice no ducktail, such old hat. This is the heart of the 911 Rensport. Uh, this is much of what you're paying for in that sub 250,000 pound price category. Starts life as a 3.2 Carrera engine because that's what was standard with this car originally when it left the factory. The guys at Rensport bore out the engine to a 3.4 becomes a high compression engine with fast road cams and individual throttle bodies and delivers as a consequence of that about 300 brake horsepower in a car that weighs about 1,050 kilos. So the power to weight ratio is pretty much similar to that GT3 over there, uh, but no power steering, no ABS, no traction control, no stability control, no driver aid, no, car telling you what to do and how to drive. This is a proper, pure driver's car, the best of all worlds. So it sounds pretty awesome. Uh, now I'm in it, uh, it look, feels very, I feel very at home in this thing. It's, I guess you could say basic, but it doesn't feel basic, it feels functional. So no power steering, I guess that's a good thing at speed. Uh, obviously it's got the benefit of this tractive suspension so you can change between soft, hard or mad, I suppose. Um, but the main thing is it feels just very analog, very raw, very visceral, um, and pretty cool, really. Um, it's a proper driver's 
car. Uh, let's see what it's like when we open it up a little bit and see if all of those modern bits combined with the old fashioned elements, because this car is ultimately 30 or so years old, uh, let's, uh, 40 years old in fact, let's see how that little combination goes together when it comes to actually driving it on the road. So let's see, is this quick? Seems to be. Can you hear it? So it's a pretty well sorted car, I have to say. It's um, handles impeccably. Obviously, you can adjust the suspension, you can adjust things like pitch and roll and so on. Uh, it goes like the clappers, as you, I suppose you'd expect 300 brake horsepower in just over a tonne to do. But it just sounds beautiful. I think that's one of the things with this car. Not only is it does it look fantastic because it's reminiscent of the old 1973 911 ST stroke RSR, but the engine noise is absolutely incredible. It sounds like a Spitfire taking off. It's quite, it's quite enthusing, I have to say. Certainly gets the pulse racing. It's fun. And definitely worth that 250k. Honestly. Oh, by the way, hopefully our cameraman's ready for this. Brakes are pretty good too. Quite reassuring. I think you should get on the phone, call Paul Cockle at Rensball in the heart of the Cotswolds and stick your name down. You won't get one of these straight away, by the way. Apparently, he was telling me recently there's a two year waiting list for one of his cars, um, two years. I suspect by then there might be a little bit more money, but there still won't be as much as a singer. So um, if you have a little bit of spare change down the back of the sofa, or maybe a 911 that you love, but you'd like to love it a little bit more, or you could either use that as a donor car, or maybe you could chop it in and buy one of these, because this is awesome. The other uh, very interesting and exciting thing that you get for your money in a car like this is that um, it tends to scare small children and leave adults in the street kind of weak at the knees. Wow, so definitely one of the most fun things you can do sitting down and indeed with your clothes on. Um, it's a really fun, exciting, visceral inspiring thing this um, and honestly if I was driving a Singer or a Theon at twice or even three times the money I'm really not sure that you'd see two three four five hundred thousand pounds worth of difference would you okay so that's it uh, in summary this is a great value car isn't it even two hundred and fifty thousand pounds it looks and goes like a Singer it looks and goes like a Theon uh, or anything else really that's in the 500,000 to 2 million bracket, but it's half of that 500,000 pounds cost. So I'm convinced, hopefully you are. Uh, and um, yes, who would have thought 250,000 pounds, quarter of a million quid's worth of Porsche 911 is great value for money. See, I told you so. Anyway, if you've liked this, please, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video and we will be back very soon for the next thrilling installment of Porsche Thanks for watching.